You guys can stand and pledge that to me. Introductions. My name is Jonathan Hall, and I am uh, on the board of selectmen in North Berwick, and I'm uh, serving as the chair this year. Hello. Uh, Wendy Town, vice chair, uh, North Berwick board of selectmen. Michael Johnson, Jr., North Berwick board of selectmen. Mike Johnson, Senior, North Berwick board of selectmen. Dwayne Morin, town manager for town North Berwick. Karen Garish, House District 20, representing the town of Lebanon. Jennifer Parker, District 6, parts of North and South Berwick. Of the Connor House District 5, Berwick, and part of North Berwick. Travis Dwyer, School Board, representing Berwick. Rebecca Hopper, School Board, um, representing North Berwick. Josh Plant, Berwick Board of Selectmen. Rebecca England, Berwick Board of Selectmen. Laura Wright, Vice Chair, Lebanon Board of Selectmen. Paul Kettle, Selectman. Chip Farrell, Chair, Lebanon Board of Selectmen. David Aaron, Board of Selectmen for Berwick, Vice Chair. Rebecca Beal, um, representing Lebanon on the school board. Tom Wright, chair of the board of selectmen. Steve Elbridge, town manager, town of Burr. Bob uh, Pendergast, town um, selectmen, town of May. Jordan Potter, uh, board of, uh, school board from Lebanon. Stan Cowan, uh, school board representing North Berwick. Nancy Newbert, uh, school board representing Lebanon. Lynn Manley, school board representing North Berwick. Steve Connolly, MSCB 60 Superintendent. Dustin Bryce, School Board of Berwick. I'm Sunny, I'm Jessica Nofford. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put yourself down. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica Nofford, School Board of Berwick. 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 So uh, first of all, I'd like to um, thank everyone for being here tonight. Um, this is an extremely important issue. Uh, it's an important topic for all the constituents who elected us um, and who we now represent. Berwick, Lebanon, and North Berwick have a 50-year history of working together as one large community uh, with the goal of offering the best possible education to the children of this district. If our district dissolves, uh, those most negatively impacted will be our children, the future of our community. With that being said, we have all come to this meeting with preconceived notions of what is fair and how we view each other. Regardless of these feelings, I implore all the participants of this meeting to listen, to really listen to each other and what we all have to say. The expectation for everyone here tonight is to handle themselves with the utmost civility. We're going to start um, the meeting tonight with a presentation from North Brook's town manager, Dwayne Warren, on the history of MS 60 and the current funding formula. Then we will begin um, with a presentation of information from the town of Berwick, um, followed by the town of Lebanon, the town of North Berwick, the MSAD 60 School Board of Directors. Um, this part of the meeting is specifically set aside for presentation of information and not for questions. So we will um, immediately follow that um, with a discussion period between all parties, um, and we will hopefully end this meeting with a statement of intention from all three towns. So at this time, I'd like to turn it over to the North Berwick Town Manager, um, Mr. Moore. Thanks, John. Um, a lot of people have asked about the formation of our district. And I'm a history buff. I also went through the last cost-sharing <coughs> formula discussion that we had. I think, looking around the table, I'm the only player that was here when that happened. <laughs> um, maybe that's good, maybe that's bad, I don't know. Uh, but I figured I'd give you guys a little bit of history of the cost-sharing formula uh, and the history of our district. Our district. <laughs> Was, it wasn't a big happy family when we started. Um, so I wanted to at least give you an idea of how the district started, why it started, and so forth. So, is this going to work Yeah, it should. You press the... Let's ask me for password. <laughs> no, I don't need it. Hopefully it's going to stay up. Okay. So, 
just to give you an idea, back in 1966, the state of Maine decided that they wanted to take all the small school districts that were in the state of Maine and create a whole bunch of school districts. Uh, so that so the so the towns were got together. In, in our in our case, it was actually North Berwick, Lebanon, and Berwick. Um, there was a bunch of meetings leading up to the June 18, 1966 meeting. Vote number one. Uh, at that vote, Lebanon actually defeated the formation of the district. Uh, North Berwick voted to join the district, but did not elect the three representatives that was required. And in Berwick, actually voted in the affirmative to join the district. One month later, the town of Lebanon re-voted to join the school district, and they actually voted to do so. Two months later, the town of North Berwick voted not to join the district. Uh, and I can tell you, I, I put the votes there. I didn't know everybody else's votes because I don't have privy to your, uh, to your elections, but uh, for North Berwick, we actually was overwhelming not to join uh, the school district. But we did vote to elect our three school district members, just in case it was voted in the affirmative. Following the North Road vote, the Board of Education the State of Maine got together uh, like they do every month, and they were creating districts. They actually voted to create SAD 60, despite North Road voting not to be in the district. Uh, when that happened, the town of North Road sued the State of Maine, Department of Education, the Maine Supreme Court. We filed a lawsuit in December of 1966. Uh, just to give you an idea, I was six months old when that happened. Um, <laughs> but uh, we voted to, to, to the town of Oak to sue the, 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 the Department of Education. Uh, in March of 1967, the Maine Supreme Court sided with the town of North Berwick and actually dissolved SAD 60. From the time that the, the Maine Supreme Court issued their decision, about one month later, uh, legislation was introduced into the, to the Maine legislature to create SAD 60 again. PS Law 67, which we'll control. We'll hear lots about this evening, was how we were going to form SAD 60. This was, in, this was an exception to what at that time was called the Sinclair Act. So the Sinclair Act at that time was saying that towns were going to share costs based on state valuation. Our schools, our, our three towns decided that we didn't want to do it that way. We wanted to do it in a different manner by sharing it with pupils and valuation. So legislation was created to give the towns a range, basically from 30 to 70 to 70 to 30, to choose. And actually, this, the legislature put in within that within that um, piece of legislation that a committee was to be formed by the town selectmen and the existing school board committee members, and they were to, by two thirds vote to decide what percentage they were going to use. Um, after the, the private special law was actually enacted on April 14th, it was an emergency legislation that took effect right away. Uh, the committee got together and by a two-thirds vote actually voted to establish the formula 50% pupils, 50% valuation. One month after that, in 19, May 20, 1967, all three of the communities voted uh, in the affirmative <coughs> to establish our district at 50-50. So one other question is why 50-50? I know that's been a question that's been asked around a lot. I can tell you, like I said, in 1966, 1967, I was still in diapers. Uh, but unfortunately, but in 1999, the last uh, cost sharing formula, I had the opportunity to meet a lot of people who were involved in the formation of the cost sharing formula at the time. And I spent many, many hours with them. Uh, unfortunately, most of those people have now passed. Uh, but at least I got North Burke's perspective on why North Burke Pursued 50-50. Um, there was really two major issues why North Berwick. Concern was district-wide cost. At the time, North Berwick had a high valuation, low student population. Berwick had, a, had actually a higher valuation than North Berwick, but had tremendously more students. And Lebanon had a low valuation, high pupil count. Interesting, those percentages today are almost nearly close to what they were back then. Um, and I'll, I have a chart to kind of show you some of that stuff. Um, the the age-old question has always been, how do you marry towns with high valuation, low student population, with low valuation, high population count? North Brook was concerned that uh, North Brook would show the majority of the cost, even though we had the least amount of students in the school district. One of the other major concerns was debt. One of the questions that we had to vote on originally were those four questions. And one of them was, well, are we going to share each other's debt? Um, North Berwick actually voted no, not to share debt. One of the reasons was when we started the school district, uh, North Berwick had $22,000 worth of debt, Berwick had $95,000 worth of debt, and Lebanon had about 100 and 
10.5 of debt. Uh, the concern was if, if it was done strictly on valuation, North Borough would pay about 39% of the costs, but they only had 10% of the debt. And that was a big concern to the residents of town North Borough. That was one of the reasons they went with 50-50, understanding that we might pay a little bit higher per people cost, um, but most probably a little lower mill rate value. So those were, those were some of the concerns that uh, North Berwick had. And I was told this explicitly by the school board members that were in existence back in 1967. They said, the only way North Berwick was ever going to join the SAD 60 school district is with the, as if it was 50-50. Because of the because of the valuations and the and the school district, back in 1999 when we had these last discussions, we actually went to the school di to the Department of Education to find, to get some numbers, and those are going to be real tiny for you guys to read. Uh, but unfortunately, the school the Department of Education actually only starts their their numbers in 1975. Uh, even the school side 60 starts in 1975, so we don't have the actual numbers from 1967. But we do have the numbers from 75, 76 through to today. Uh, just to give you an idea, back in 1975, 76, Berwick had 955 kids, Lebanon had 715, North Berwick had 666. Today, uh, based on the ED 279, uh, the numbers are a little bit different. You look at actual counts, the ED 279 actually averages two years worth of student population. Uh, Berwick has 1,301 kids. Lebanon has 980 kids, and North Brook has 666 kids. Actually, the same number as we did back in 1975. Um, you can see the growth of our valuation at the time. Berwick had about $20 million in, uh, in valuation. North Brook had about $21 million. Lebanon had $13 million worth of valuation. Today, those numbers are vastly different because of the economy of scale. Berwick has about $582 million. Lebanon, about $472, and North Brook, about $588 but the percentages are pretty close. Even from the inception, North Brook has always paid a higher per pupil cost than the other two, than the other two communities. Uh, even when you didn't factor in ability to pay. Back, in, back uh, when ED 201 form was actually in place, not only did it include valuation and population count, but also include things like median income, and there was a bunch of other factors. I understand that the ED 201 is the state's way how they share out costs. That's been replaced with the ED 279. Uh, so you might hear some of those numbers tossed around today. As of today, uh, Berwick pays about uh, $5,300 per student in the local cost. Lebanon pays about $5,700 in the local cost. And North Berwick pays about $8,000 in local cost per students. Uh, one question that's been bantered around and that we've heard, and my board asked me to, to address it, is. Um, do other school districts do this in the state? And there actually are other school districts that do this in the state. There's actually 12 school districts that share their costs. Uh, nine of those are under what's called a private and special law. Uh, Hamden, Ndombic Valley, Massabesic, Noble, Five Towns CSD, Wells and Agunquit, MDI, which is Mount Desert Island, uh, Booth Bay, Booth Bay Harbor, Lubeck and Eastport, and Baileyville actually share their, their costs only by pupils. And Bonnie Eagle and Bethel actually share their, their costs only by state valuation. Uh, but the top uh, seven, I believe, top seven share strictly by valuation and pupil count. And they all have private and special laws that, that determine that. Uh, there are about 20 other community, other districts that share in various ways. They, they share, they start off with what's called the 20A valuation, which is, you're gonna hear, I'm sure, 20A 606B which is what the state's uh, EPS uh, law revolves around, and valuation, or a share thereof, and not just strictly 20A, uh, 606B, and valuation. Uh, so there's a whole host of different funding formulas throughout the whole state. Give you a little bit of history. Um, and this is more so just to give you an idea how, how this happened and what happened back in 1999 to 2002. It's about a three-year time frame that we discussed changing cost-sharing formulas back then. In summer of 1999, actually, Town of Lebanon actually tried to meet secretly with the Town of Berwick, and an email was sent to me, meant for Mr. McMahon, who at the time was the town manager for the Town of Berwick, um, for a meeting between the two towns. At the time, the two towns wanted to change the school funding formula, the 75% valuation, 25% pupils. 
at the time North Broke was paying four thousand a student and Lebanon and Broke were paying two thousand a student. In November of 99, Berwick held an information meeting with the Town of Department of Education, or the State Department of Education. Uh, I put tempers flared at the meeting, that's being polite. It was actually a very nasty meeting uh, for those who can remember being at that meeting. Um, in December 1999, Town of North Berwick actually introduced legislation to change existing law. Uh, previous to 2007, the law read that uh, in order to change uh, a cost sharing formula, it was a district-wide vote that required an affirmative district-wide and not by each town. The town of North Berwick introduced legislation to change that. The legislation was tabled, but one thing that came out of that and actually actually started changing how the state looks at cost-sharing formula was that they created a cost-sharing committee. Um, and I'll show you when, the, when that, all that stuff came, came about. In January, 20, January 25, 2000, the Berwick uh, Board of Selectmen formally uh, examined options open them to change the cost sharing funding formula. In March 20th of 2000, the North Borough Board of Selectmen uh, formally uh, examined the option of leaving the district. Um, one thing I can tell you that uh, all the discussions that we had during that time, civility was not the norm, I can tell you. It was very contentious. It was not uh, a fun time to be, uh, to be around the table. Um, it was, uh, at the time we were actually building this building, and there was a lot of concerns swirling what was going on within the district. Um, in April of 2000, North Berwick asked Levin and Berwick not to proceed with the funding changes. Uh, Berwick and Levin decided that they wanted to proceed with the funding change. In April of 2000, North Berwick voters overwhelmingly voted to start the process of leaving Side 60. Uh, this hit the governor's desk. At that time, I can tell you there, was, there had been only one school, one town in the entire state of Maine that had left a school district. And the governor was concerned, uh, so he actually met with all three towns at the Blaine House, hoping that if we got to sit around the table and eat lunch, maybe their cooler heads would, provo would prevail. Um, cooler heads did not prevail. That was a very, very bad meeting. Uh, most people left and uh, uh, very dissatisfied. One thing that it did do, though, is that Governor King asked the then Commissioner of Education, Duke Albanese, to convene a meeting to start talking with the three communities. Uh, Commissioner actually convened two meetings. Uh, both those meetings would break down the communication. Nothing was, uh, nothing actually happened other than more name calling and uh, not a lot of uh, uh, positive progress, I guess. Uh, in December 15th, uh, the cost sharing report authorized by the legislature was published. The reason I say that is part of that cost sharing uh, report that, that came out of there uh, actually started to change how cost sharing is to be amended by school districts. Uh, most of you, uh, especially those in the school uh, uh, world, will know that uh, 1301, which is a process by which most school funding formulas are changed, uh, called for uh, basically a district-wide vote. In December 15th, 2000, there were some changes that were made to that that allowed for different factors to be introduced other than valuation and pupil count, um, as long as all the towns within your district agreed to do that. Um, that report is actually still available, um, on, I believe, on the DOE uh, website. Uh, November 2001, uh, the, the uh, Town of Lebanon and Town of Berwick went to their school board, uh, and the school board voted in the affirmative to start a funding formula change. We're now two years into our discussions, I should mention that. So this was a long process. Uh, so two years after we st this whole thing started, we started a formalized uh, uh, funding formula change. Uh, it was facilitated by Sawin Millard, who was a former commissioner of education. Met six times over the course of the, of the, course of the winter. Uh, and in January of 2002, the committee recommended <coughs> the 55 valuation, 45 pupil count. Um, the reason that that number was selected, it wasn't a magic number. The town of North Berwick had been going through the process of withdrawing from SAD 60. That withdrawal process was gonna cost the town of North Berwick an additional $90,000. A 45-55 split added $80,000 to town of North Berwick's bill. And one thing that we did find out as we went through the process of withdrawing from SAD 60, uh, it was gonna cost North Berwick an additional $90,000. However, it was gonna cost the town of Berwick and the town of Lebanon significantly more than that in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. 
and at the time the cost sharing formula that was proposed by both communities, a 75-25 split would have sent a million dollars uh, to the town of North Broward. In November of 2002, the three communities voted. I should say that one thing that happened at that <coughs> the last committee meeting is that the committee, because of the because it was so uh, contested, uh, everybody agreed that we would not talk about cost sharing formula for at least 10 more years, uh, regardless of the outcome of the vote in November of 2002. In 2002, November 2002, the three communities voted. Uh, it actually uh, was <coughs> defeated. North Berwick and Lebanon uh, defeated the vote. Berwick voted to accept the formula. Um, because there was no change in the cost sharing formula, North Berwick uh, stopped the process of withdrawing from SAD 60. In 2001, kind of a little bit out of sequence, but the state of Maine actually started the process of looking at EPS, or essential programs and services, which how the school is funded, uh, how the, the state funds school education anyway. In 2003, EPS became law. The reason that's important, because in 2007, the state of Maine changed the law as well as, as it relates to how school districts are called. So in 2007, uh, they, they changed it to what, instead of SADs and CSADs, were now called RSUs, or Regional School Units. Um, and as part of that law change, they decided how they were going to handle cost sharing formulas, how they were going to be handled, and how they were going to be changed. There's really two sections, Title VIII, uh, subsection 1481A, Section 2, and Section 2A. Uh, Section 2A is really what applies to SAD 60. Um, it's actually one, we're one of nine school districts that actually fall under this, uh, under this law that says that the only way that a cost sharing formula can be, can be modified uh, if it was created by a private special law is to either, is either uh, as a part of a reorganization of, uh, into an RSU or as a result of a negotiated mutual agreement between the parties to the cost sharing. All other school districts actually fall under section two, which actually then they do follow the 1301 uh, cost sharing formula plan. In 2009, SAD 60 actually was reorganized uh, as at RSU 6, uh, SAD 60. As part of that reorganization, uh, SAD 60 was, uh, uh, we kept the same cost sharing formula that was in existence in accordance with the PS Law 67. Uh, and actually, there's a, uh, an exception within the uh, EPS law, that's Title 20A, subsection 15688, section 4, which says that we share, form, we share our costs based on our private and special law. One question that was that was my board asked me to look into as well was how many schools have withdrawn from districts from the state of Maine uh, since uh, since school districts have been in existence. Uh, Thirty nine towns have actually withdrawn from districts, and over the past uh, five years, seven districts have actually have been dissolved, affecting thirty seven towns. Little history lesson. So um, at this time, we would uh, welcome any information that Borough would like to add to um, the funding formula, um, anything at all. Yeah, I'm Tom Wright, Chamber of the Board of Borough. Um, I want to apologize for any anxiety or distress this has caused anybody. It was not been my intention or the intention of the Borough Board to do this. Is this started out as just a question and answer, fact-finding mission. We're not disputing the 50-50 formula, the valuation of pupils. We've never questioned that. All our questions have concentrated on one small part of the formula, and that was how the money that comes down from the state, based on per pupils, is distributed in the school district. Is Back in the fall of 2017, our finance director and town manager were preparing for the upcoming budget season, looking at the school funding, and they seemed to find a discrepancy. <coughs> it's, it's, from our perspective, it seemed like the state was sending money down based on per pupils in each town, but the school district was taking all the monies and lumping it together and effectively dividing it by three. We don't dispute that Burroughs has more students than any other town. We've never disputed that. 
is simply that when the money comes down from the state, is is approximately nine million dollars comes down for Berwick, two million, two and a half million for North Berwick, and six point nine million for Lebanon. We just questioned why we weren't getting the full credit for the students we had. We reached out to the school board, to the school administration first, as it was brought up in, I believe it was an October 6th school board meeting, that Berwick was looking at this formula. So everybody on the school board from all three towns knew that we were looking at this, and nobody said anything at that time. We went to the Department of Education at the state, and they gave us some other information that seemed to conflict with what we had, we spoke with our attorney. We looked at the history ourselves. We were just looking for questions, answers to our questions. <coughs> Burroughs has never said we want to tear this district apart. We've never, <coughs> that has never been our goal. <coughs> we were just asking a very specific question about what was happening. Is the town manager reached out to Lebanon because they seemed to be in the same predicament we were, asked if they'd be willing to talk to us, they invited us to their meeting. We went, we talked, and at the end of that meeting, it was clearly stated that we were going to talk to North Borough. And then it hit the fan. Next thing I know, is Borough was talking about having secret meetings, being underhanded, having no integrity, and, you know, it really shocked me because all we've been doing is asking questions. We hadn't made any statements. We hadn't done anything to move forward with anything. If we talked to our state representative and a question came up about if we were to change this, how would it go about happening? She said it would have to be special legislation. And there was a question about what that legislation would look like is our attorney drew up the formal paperwork that would be presented at the state, but we took no action on that. We we're still asking questions. I've said before, I had three generations of my family involved in this school district. The last thing I want to do is endanger it. <coughs> We've never put forward that we were actively going to change this. We never put forward that we were questioning the 50-50 valuation of the pupils. As I said, we were looking at one specific part of this. Is, and we still haven't gotten all the answers yet. So we're still asking questions. Is, we didn't come in with any preconceived notions. We haven't made any decisions as a board. This is all been discussion. And I can't speak for the other members of the board, but I can say that, again, it was never our intention to tear this district apart. And we've worked well with the school district in the past, and we've worked well with our partners in this district. And I don't see where asking questions and trying to get answers is that <coughs> is the crime that's been put up to me. Is I can't say what the future may hold. I think that school funding is a very important part of all of the state. Is for the past seven years, the administration in Augusta has been attacking public education cutting it, diluting it, diverting funds from it. And that was going to be part of our question also, is where this money go? And it's like when Pendergast keeps asking, is where does all this money go that is being taken away from the school districts? And we haven't got the answer for that one either. So, as, as I said, we have no preconceived notions about what's going on or what will happen. As I have said in the past at a school board meeting, at our selectmen meeting, I believe I emailed the town manager in North Burrard suggesting that this is something that's very important to all of us. 
And rather than having 25 people meeting, is I would suggest that we form a subcommittee with one selectman and one school board member from each town to study this rationally, logically, and see what we can do not only at this level, but at the state level and at the federal level. Would anybody else um, from Borough like to speak? <clears throat> so I'm Ed Munir, Vice Chair, Borough Board Selectman. And I, I spoke at, uh, at our last official meeting, um, apologizing for attending a meeting of which um, I thought was supposed to be informative more so than anything else. Uh, I'd like to think that I conducted myself in the same way that I would at any other meeting. I uh, was not aware that it was televised, but that's besides the point. Um, my intention was to, again, get information. So uh, the perception that um, somehow uh, I was looking to um, damage the district or tear it apart or find some other way to, to put Berwick on, on top of, of either Lebanon was, was not the intent. I have three or four children that have gone through this system and are continuing to go through this system. Uh, it's been great. I have no complaints. Uh, this is the most informative information that I've received other than the, um, from Mr. Guillermo uh, at our last meeting. And so I appreciated his information because it provided uh, a tremendous amount of, of insight as to how a lot of this occurred. And Mr. Moore, and I appreciate your presentation as well. You, you provided a lot more information. It gave me a lot more to digest. I, I think um, what we did was premature, and I think it could have, could have been done better. So I apologize for that, and uh, I hope we can move forward civilly and, and uh, do so in a manner which will bring credit to our district and instead of tearing us apart. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you, John. Uh, I guess I'll just throw this in. The idea of the three towns and both at the board level and the school board level uh, forming a subcommittee, I would actually say that's not a bad idea. Uh, but in that, the discussion I think should be broader than simply just the discussion of uh, school funding, but rather effects of town policy on the overall growth of the district and the cost of that growth. I, I think certainly there are differences in the way as towns we run each other. And uh, in particular, uh, one that I look at uh, would be things like a growth policy. I know that uh, North Berwick has one. I don't believe that in the same context, Berwick and Lebanon are in the uh, same ballpark in terms of uh, how they formally control that growth. And that would be something that certainly would be uh, as equally important to the discussion as just the ability to look at the cost sharing and the uh, effects of state input versus federal input versus local input. I think that all would have to be on the table because otherwise we're only looking at really half the issue because again as we saw in the 42 years uh, since the formation of the district one town has had steady growth and really uh, maintained a st student population that has been uh, very you know consistent and easy to tread versus uh, Berwick and Lebanon uh, were the two that have certainly shown growth and uh, I think uh, it kind of ties in well all together so I would say that the discussion should be broader than simply just a, a cost factor. Okay. Uh, so if nobody else from Burke wants to speak, maybe from Lebanon, want to present any information? Sure. Um, first, let's thank Dwayne for his presentation. Um, it was very informative. Um, I'd also like to say that we set our piece to North Burke directly, and so I'm not going to repeat that. Um, we're here about moving forward, and I think that's what's important. Um, I'd also like to say that Lebanon has not come here with any preconceived ideas of what is fair, what is not fair. Uh, if anything, all of this has done to me is I ask the question, what is fair? I don't know what it is. Um, and every single town probably thinks it's something different. I do know that. Because probably not, probably not every town, or even every person in every town, can agree. And I think we have enough boards here, we realize that the people within our town, it's hard for everybody to agree on something. So, I don't really have anything about the cost sharing, because as you'll see, it's, I think we're, this is way too early. Um, but I'd like to share two thoughts. Uh, the first one that's been touched on is the process. So, 
All of this started due to a failed process of one town reaching out to another town without the third involved. Um, I would argue that a meeting like this with one town in charge setting the agenda about cost sharing is probably also a failed process since every single town should be considered an equal. So the state, um, I don't know whether they're any, again, the state actually has, and I have some of these, I did 15, which is not even close to enough. Uh, so maybe you take one and skip one or whatever, but you can pass that around. It's basically the law in the state is 20A. Dwayne probably knows this stuff better than I do. But essentially what it does is it's a system, it's a process for evaluating the cost sharing form. Um, and it's set up with facilitators. That the Department of Education, and I have a handout for that too. <coughs> they actually pay up to seventy-five hundred dollars for a facility. That most of the times, from my my understanding, a lot of them are are ex superintendents, so they understand the school stuff, um, and they're the ones who actually direct the meeting and set the agenda. And it's with whether you want to call it the subcommittee or whatever, but that's process they do. I would argue if, if we had had a process in place, none of this would have happened. I think if, if somebody had reached out to the superintendent and there was a process that he could, that there was a process in place to do this, then that would have been the direction. Let's do this process. I've done some research. Some towns do it every 10 years. They do it after the decennial census. So the results come out, and then within six months, they do a review. It's just an automatic review. Again, is that an idea? Sure. I, I honestly believe, I hadn't questioned it. Look, I don't know whether 50-50 is fair or not. We looked at there, there's towns that are 90% valuation, 10% pupils, 70% pupils, 30% valuation, and it's all over the map. They're all different makeups. I don't, as far as the town, I don't know if it's fair. Um, I do know a lot of it is a two-thirds supermajority, which I think for a district is a mandatory, it should be. I don't know whether that's law, but I, in my mind it should be. It shouldn't be easy to change a formula, just on the whim. Um, you know, I don't, you know, if I, I don't have any specific ideas for us, but, I hear North Berwick doesn't like because they have the smallest amount of pupils, but Berwick has talked about valuations or TIF districts. Well, you could go 60% pupils and 40% valuations, but you include TIF. There's all sorts of different ways you can slice and dice it. That's what a meeting has to be on. It's hard with a huge group to do that. And again, the handout this game has, it basically is three people from each town with one a school board member and two other people that are chosen by the by the select board. Um, is that the right number? I don't know. My guess is we could come up with our own system, our own process of doing that. I was hoping that's what this meeting was about. I think it's been touched on. Um, I think growth ordinances or, or the growth of a town, I think that's fair game. I think the cost of pupils is fair game. I mean, anything that's going to affect the cost of each of our, our towns, I think is fair game. You know. I don't think that Lebanon should be penalized because they don't have a growth ordinance. We had one, and it never, it never got hit. Um, we've got low taxes. Maybe that's why people are coming to, to Lebanon. So we, you know, so I mean, there's all sorts of reasons. Every town is, is different and has their own makeup. Um, so yeah, it's just, I think there's a lots of ways. So that's, I guess that's all I really have on, on the cost sharing. I think <coughs> it should be more about process. And I think we ought to be focused on getting a process in place before we do anything, and then go through that process. Um, one, other, one other thought, and this came up, and again, it hasn't brought up tonight, but it, it came up in some of the meetings, and I was talking about legal fees. Um, I know Lebanon hasn't spent a dime, a penny, on legal fees as it relates to anything school related. Um, I heard, don't know if it's true, I'd love, to know, I'd love to know an answer when we get to the discussions, that the school district is going to pay for North Berwick's legal fees as it relates to the school, this issue. Um, I hope so. 
And so I guess I'm trying to get an understanding about, because it was also said that money got moved into the legal budget from somewhere else. That was said in one of our, the meeting that we had in our town. So again, where are those legal fees coming from? I don't, I don't, I don't understand. I just know that Lebanon hasn't spent a dime. And it's my feeling that if we decide we want to do something, that's out of our pockets. It's not out of the schools. So the same reason that North, I mean Berwick reached out to their attorneys. I'm assuming the school isn't paying for that. I'm assuming that's coming out of Berwick's pocket. So I just, I just like to get a clarification on attorney fees and fees that are coming out of the school district for this because I'm trying to understand you know how that's fair and where that money is going um, so I mean I hopefully during when we get open up to discussion that that can come up um, that's really about all I have again I really think we ought to be talking process I'm glad that we've touched on it a little bit tonight and I hope that that's maybe where we can go and whether it's this meeting or another some similar meeting that we can hash out a process that all the towns agree on um, and then to avoid this 18 year repeat of meetings that happen that shouldn't have happened. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I guess the school board, I don't know if you guys have anything you'd like to talk about. Can I provide a clarification on legal? <coughs> so um, there comes a point in the process that uh, the, the legal costs that towns are incurring becomes the responsibility of the, of the school departments later in the process. So in our discussions this year with the board, we added uh, $25,000 in, um, started out with a higher number but based on the cycle that would be needed for this process to move forward through legislation and so forth. The 2018-19 budget looks like that. Um, even if things went in a wrong direction, in, you know, in, in conflict with people, it looks like uh, $25,000 would cover the costs. So um, it's not about shifting the, everybody in the legal fees shifted it's, uh, an additional $25,000 into our legal fee. And then um, there have been no legal fees paid for any district. Uh, any municipality by MSA 60 We haven't incurred legal costs at this point. I've had just a preliminary conversation with the uh, uh, independent council that would not be a conflict of interest for any of the towns. So. Before you guys, if you want to say anything, but, uh, I think some of the confusion is that we have the same attorney. And so when we hired um, and paid authorized to pay for some legal services, um, we had to use somebody different, and I believe you guys had to as well. Mm -hmm. I up somebody different. That makes us as well, by the way, I don't know if you knew that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, anything else from the school board? Well, I made this statement uh, weeks ago on behalf of North Burley. Um I was distressed when I, I think in the beginning, because our town manager wasn't included in these discussions uh, for all the reasons that have been presented tonight. And I, and I was not uh, happy at all with the tone of the meeting as we heard it on tape. Uh, you know, when someone from Berwick said, make some remark to the effect that uh, you know, we can get a million dollars out of North Berwick and not get three million. There were other remarks made too that were totally inappropriate. And you wonder why some of us were angered by that. It should be clear. And I'm actually, yeah, I, apologize. I accept the apologies that we made. I think this is a very complex issue. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not in favor of a subcommittee, but that's up to the majority of people here. There are just a lot of issues that have been raised. I mean, I, and I think, that, I think that there are parties to this thing. Um, who are not fully aware of some of the information that has uh, gone around. Um, I'm looking at uh, William Stockmeyer's response on behalf of MSAB 60, the, the school board and the superintendent, uh, to, I think, Berwick's attorney from Bernstein Shore, Shannon Cook-Mueller, 
and it, in re reference to a spreadsheet that Burwick had prepared back in September. And I quote, the Burwick methodology, if applied, would have reduced Burwick taxes by over $2 million. And I can understand their desire to do that. But it really concerns me, and I probably should have left this up to the Lebanon representatives to discuss, but by over $2 million, and an increase in taxes in Lebanon by over $2,675,000. And, and I have to wonder if information like this wasn't, you know, uh, fully shared with everybody involved. Is there any discussion of that at the meeting that Berwick attended with Lebanon? $2,675,000. There are other issues that are involved in this. I mean, you know, as a, as a board member, our primary concern is the welfare of the students in this district. That's all there is to it. And uh, I've been on this board for six years. I have no agendas. Um, my, my only agenda is to be financially as fiscally responsible as we can be and do um, as much as we can possibly do for the benefit of the kids in this, in this school district. But uh, I, I'm still angry. The meeting should not have happened in the beginning. We probably should have had this kind of a meeting in the beginning. And I don't recall any discussion at our October 6th board meeting. But no, there was a, a meeting the uh, representatives from Berwick came to my office. Came to your office, yes. right. And that, but, you know, the board, uh, the board had no discussion on that. Uh, but uh, right from the beginning, our town manager should have been involved and, and we should have discussed, had an opportunity to discuss uh, all of this information that we're now sharing. Anybody else from the school committee like to make a comment? I mean, more of a question. Um, I can understand this concept that Mr. Wright has a, <clears throat> something of a pot of money being divided up by three. Um, maybe you can explain it to me because, it, you know, I've been on the board for a couple of years and when, the, when we create the budget, we don't do it, okay, Brooks would just get this much money, North Florida gets this much. It's, it's based completely on, as far as I can tell, on need. And, you know, what the students <coughs> need and, you know, this building is getting old, we need to fix it up or get a new one, we need this many school buses. And um, <coughs> I think that's kind of a misconception of how the money is going to be. So if that's your basis for feeling that your, your town's being treated that fairly, I, I don't think it's a really valid um, basis, but. We have a budget workshop Thursday night. We're still struggling with the budget. Um, this, this is a major distraction in a very difficult year. And I think a lot of questions could be answered if people attended, you know, and listened in on that workshop uh, as we try to finalize a budget to present to the towns. But uh, we, when we look at budgeting, we consider the needs throughout the district. And, uh, and since I've been on this board, I've been really impressed. Uh, I've worked in public education now for 47 years in other districts. And uh, people have come and gone from this board, but we have represented each other's interest and concerns and uh, attendance at any of our meetings over the last six years that I've been on the board clearly indicate that to anyone. Um, I, care, I personally care as much about what goes on in Berwick and Lebanon and the needs of those schools as I do North Berwick Elementary. And that's really been the attitude of this board. That's the way we operate. But, if we need to put up a new building in one of the towns, that's where a considerable amount of uh, resources would go. And uh, that may have to be done sooner than later, one of our three towns. Before we start getting to a point where we're asking questions of other people and responding to those questions, 
there are any more statements? I, I think North Brook would like to make a few statements. Um, I'd just like to make an observation. This is my first year on the board, and it's, it's a difficult budget. We're trying to figure out how to get new buses, which our fleet needs to be replaced, um, we can't get the buses that we need on schedule. We're going to kick the can down the road. We can't do the repairs on the buildings because we don't have the money. So we've got a list of priorities, and we have to decide which ones are the most urgent of that list. And this is a distraction. This has nothing to do with the way the district runs. And you know, if you think that you're going to get another $2 million out of Lebanon, um, a blood from a stone, <coughs> um, it, it's just not, it's not okay to gang up on partners. And I would like to see us treat each other fairly. I think the biggest problem I've noticed is a lack of communication between the board and the towns and the lack of curiosity from the selectmen about what actually goes on at the school board. And knowing what's happening, what the priorities are, what's coming up, it, it, it just seems like I've been stymied at trying to get that information on our board, and I don't see that Berwick is any more successful. Maybe North Berwick is, but I, I think communication is the biggest issue. We don't have a newspaper that services all three towns. It's hard to get the news out there. Thank you, Mom. It was kind of point uh, touched on, and I just want to reiterate that when you're thinking about the monies that come into the school budget from the state and the numbers from each town, it is lumped up for a reason. That's our our goal isn't to divide. If you watched the school board meeting, you wouldn't tell who was representing which town. We're for every kid and the needs of the district as a whole. Um, so when you're thinking of state money is coming in, I don't think I've ever heard the question of going, why would Lebanon be getting more this week? You know, this year, darn it, I, I'm for Berwick. We should get that money. Lebanon would need a school or Lebanon needs X. And we're for the, the whole. And uh, I couldn't be prouder to be part of this board where every single working day that we're together is getting something done for the benefit of all. <coughs> um, now, to beat a dead horse, because uh, I believe I've said a few words that hurt feelings in previous meetings, is that there has been a tape meeting, whether it was known it was taped or not, and that tape meeting, if anyone watched it, was not a fact-finding mission. And I will continue to beat that dead horse until someone admits that when you bring legislation to a meeting and agree to get it through the state house. That's not fact-finding, that's plan-making, that's plan-doing. And that has been a fallacy that's continued. I can't imagine it still is, because it's on tape, and we all know it's been tape. That's continued to today. Uh, that frustrates that. Live in the jeepers out there. And that's my, uh, my comment. <coughs> I just, just want to throw out one thing. It's one of the biggest, uh, one of, well, a very big cost driver for us is special education. And we don't keep track of what town a child comes in who needs special services. That never enters the question in, into our discussion if a um, child should move into Lebanon that needed significant services. We don't say, oh, well, we won't give $90,000 for that child. It doesn't matter where that child is from. We service all the children. And you know we have absolutely no control over what the special ed budget is going to be. Child moves into my district, no matter what town it is, they're going to get services. And so we have to keep that in mind too. We're all a community, we're all a big family, and whatever town you're from, you're going to have to pay part of the cost for a child, no matter what town you're from. So please keep that in mind. It is a very, very big budget item for us, special education. Attend our meeting Thursday night. Uh, our special education cost, and I, I, this information just needs to get out there to voters throughout the district. Our special education cost for next year will rise by almost $600,000. That's just in the staff. That's just in staff. Okay? The staff is what we're up against. Uh, and we can give you a breakdown where most of those special education kids are from. 
but that doesn't really matter to us. We have to allocate those funds according to the needs of the kids and the schools. Um, along with that, the mill rate change, which is absolutely unprecedented, what, in 25 or 30 years, 32 cents a thousand will cost this district $545,000. So we're a million plus up right now in last year. Um, and I will suggest, you know, Thursday night at the urging of a North Berwick select person that we should probably consider suing the state over the $216,000 that they're not reimbursing us on. Um, that was because we had two programs that were going to be moved, the culinary program, of course the child development program will go to the new Sanford Regional School. And uh, we pay for those programs up front and the state has over the years reimbursed us. But now that those programs are going away, uh, there are new statutes in place and uh, the state indicates to us that they're not going to reimburse us for 200 I think we're going to have to sure. because you know, that, that's a considerable amount of money to the district. But these are just the bad considerations we're looking at. I mean, we're really in trouble. And, this, and we're not talking about any Title I, Title II money, Title I money, I guess, that we might, Title II money that we might lose from the federal government, given issues there. Uh, and remember now that, that uh, special education is an absolutely necessary federal mandate, but it is in large part an unfunded federal mandate and has been since the early 1970s and its inception. If so so, so it's an unfunded mandate. Why don't we do it how we want? Are we doing it the way we want to I would just ask that we not engage in the discussion. We'll, yeah. we'll discuss that. That should be discussed later. <coughs> so uh, I'd like to give the North Borough uh, Board a chance to make some statements. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, the, the board members have uh, stated that, you know, they don't budget based on town. You know, and if you look at the school budget, there is no Berwick budget, North Berwick budget. They don't say, well, North Berwick, we're going to have their class sizes, 15 students to one teacher, but Berwick, we don't like them. There'll be 30 students to one teacher. It's, they set a standard. It's the same. So the, the notion that this money gets put in a pot and divided up amongst the three towns equally, it's not. Berwick gets more money spent on it because Berwick has more students. And that's just the way it works. Then after that, though, after all that state money's gone and it doesn't go far enough, um, the, they have to raise money through taxing through billing the taxes, and, and it's divided up through that 50-50 formula. And when we do that, and we look at, the, at it per student, they need to raise $6,180, I believe it is, and North Berwick pays over $8,000. Uh, Lebanon pays uh, $57,5800, and uh, Berwick is $53,5500. So essentially, the way it works out is North Berwick is subsidizing the, that shortfall that, that's in, in what's happening. Um, you know, so I, I guess my, I think it's premature to talk about um, what our process should be. Because what I have not heard is what the problem is. How is Berwick being cheated under this current funding formula? How is Lebanon being cheated under the current funding formula? I mean, if no one's, if you guys aren't being cheated, then why do we even need to waste time talking about it? Let's talk about those things we can affect. You know, let's talk about our town planning and the impact it has on the school. Let's talk about, you know, the, the shortfall we have in state funding. Let's, let's deal with those things. I mean, because uh, really to have a process to talk about something where 
it's not a problem, it's pointless. Anybody else? Well, I think, you know, in, in looking at process, um, I'm, I'm not at all happy about how the process Burr followed in this initiative deliberately excluded our town manager, who clearly had the most experience with this topic and with this issue. And I think if you had given him the, the courtesy of providing you with that information, then perhaps we all would not need to be sitting around this table right now. And so I think you do need to understand that we as selectmen are significantly unhappy with the discourtesy you have done to our town manager in deliberately excluding him from your discussion and to try to involve another community in that effort. I, I do appreciate the apology that you offered, but please understand that we are still fairly unhappy about how this whole situation has evolved. And I think you are treading on very dangerous ground here in trying to open up this process yet again. All right, so I think at this time, um, you know, if we want to, in a very civil way, uh, ask questions of each other, answer those questions, um, that would be great. Kind of started to see some of that already. I don't know if you wanted to <coughs> ask a question again. Well, yeah, uh, after hearing what everyone said about how budget is done, do you still believe that it's uh, you still have this concept of a pot of money that's being split up one third, one third, one third? Well, as I said before, uh, the whole process is then you ask the questions. I apologize again for the process. If I can go back in time, I'll change it. But we're at this point now, we need to move forward from this point. Yeah. <clears throat> I've seen the other figures that have been passed around about the cost of sharing and, and how you know, the, the breakdown is. is. I haven't received a definitive answer yet, but I'm not. I'm not personally going to go pushing this issue to try to change things. I'm still just asking questions. As, as far as not thinking that we should go forward with this process, is the state, you know, from what Chip sent out, is the state recommends that we do this every 10 years. And we haven't done this. So is, I think this is a good place to start. Is if the state thinks that these processes should go on and we have it, I think that we should. It's something that we should discuss as a board, as a major board. But is the, as far as the funding formula is, when we have these meetings, it doesn't necessarily have to pertain just to this one item. It can be about all of the funding formula at the local level, at the state level, and at the federal level, and how it affects all of us. Is, as I said, is I have a long history with Noble. Is I graduated from Noble, my wife did, my kids did, I had two grandsons in the school district. The last thing I want to see is tearing the district apart. But I don't see the harm in discussing the underlying funding formula. Is whether whether it's you know concentrating on one specific issue or the broad issue. Is I think this is a discussion that we need to go through. Um, Mr. Wright, I mean, this is it. This is game day, okay? <coughs> Specifically, what is wrong with the funding formula? How is Berwick being cheated? First of all, let's just stop saying Berwick is being cheated, okay? Well, I mean, this is supposed to be. Berwick is not being cheated right now in my mind. Okay. okay. Cut that, that word out of vocabulary. And that's and Mr. Mori, you had a comment when my fellow select when you shook your head in one of his comments. What was your what was your um, reasoning for that? What was you didn't like his comment about? She was asking me a question, Mr. Sorry. 
And I was mean, answering your question. I, I, I just want to know, though, what, what, what's the issue with the current funding? I mean, what, what, what is, you've heard a lot of stuff, you've had a lot of information now. What specifically is wrong with the current funding formula that you feel we need to discuss changing it? And I don't know if there is anything specifically we, wrong. I'm still asking the question. We don't understand it. It is, it is all, we, all we want to do is better understand it as the whole movie. I, well, what don't you understand about it then? What specifically, what, what do you need answered? What information do you need? The question that was originally asked was when the state breaks down per pupil cost. Okay, and those numbers are thrown around. Burwick gets 9.9, .9. North Burwick gets their share, and Lebanon gets their share. The question that has been asked and hasn't been answered, and maybe it has, but we're not understanding it, is why does all that funding get grouped together? It's the same question I asked you last Tuesday. All the funding comes in as one lump sum, but the state breaks it out at, as a per pupil cost. And the question is, why doesn't each community get credit for that before we group it together? Well, I, and I thought I did answer that. It's because, first of all, it's not the town's money. The towns don't get a check for the state funding, and then they pass it on to the schools. It's the district's money. It's for education. And then when the district spends that money, it spends it based I mean, the on the pupil I mean, needs. And because Berwick has I more pupils, it is getting its share of the money. Right? right? So I mean, the state is saying you need a teacher for so many students. Right? And when they so that is going, that proportionally is going to be the same to meet the for every town. That the state is saying that her people Then when they, so yes. So the, the district is spending it to meet the needs you know, that the state is saying that her people needs are. Students and they need that many so yes, that money is being credited to Berwick, you know, theoretically because Berwick has those you know, students and they do that many teachers. They need that many it's the districts. It's not the so, so when that check comes in from the district from the state, what does that check what does that check have with it? Just a big big number and nothing else on the stuff? Probably uh, So we get you know, we get uh, so we get you know, we get uh, um, regular monthly payments from the state. So the question is what is like what is it rolling down in any way? No. It's just a big check. Mm -hmm. Maybe simple, but the way the way that I understood their question to be, and this may be help some people that don't, I'm not sure some people understand what he's trying to say, and I may be wrong too, so they can correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure they will. Uh, what he's thinking about is if you take the gross cost, whatever that gross big number in the sky is, and then you take that 50-50 valuation, or, or split, you have X for each of the three towns. And what he's saying is that big cost should then that be reduced by the amount of state aid that comes in. So you get state aid that represents Lebanon's portion. Should that reduce what Lebanon has to pay? State aid that comes in for the borough, should that reduce the amount that borough should pay? And state aid for North Borough. So that's what I'm thinking that they're saying is that you have this big gross cost. I don't know, let's say, say it's 20 million. I don't, I just, but it's what they're saying is that you're getting state aid, or the school's getting state aid, that's proportional to the students. So some of it's a number that comes in from Berwick and they calculate it however they calculate it. And you get a number that's representing for the students of Lebanon. And however that's calculated, but shouldn't that go against that big gross number? And that gross number is figured out by the 50-50 split, the cost <coughs> right. So there's nothing, no difference with that. And all they're saying is should the amount of state aid that comes in that's proportionate to each student go to each town's bucket to give you that bottom number that we then have to raise and appropriate from our people. And that is? And it's not. What, it, what they're saying is, is that number, that bulk number is put in here and then it's one-third, one-third, one-third. 
No, they're, no, they're, saying, they're saying it's special, they're saying it's equal. Well, what I'm saying is it's generally amongst uh, all three gallons of water. So, then, all three gallons of water. So, then, we're, what you're suggesting then is we should, instead of basing the 50 50, we should do it not on valuation but on per pupil. Which, if you want to do that, that's great for North Berwick. We've got the fewest pupils. I mean, you know. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying anything. I'm just, I'm just trying to say what I took away from what they were trying to tell us at the meeting. That's what I took their argument to be. But I mean, whether that's valid, whether it's not valid, I, I honestly don't know. I think there's a, I mean, when you have that chart that you show us with how the state <coughs> allocates the cost. Uh, because I think that might make some sense. I don't have the whole chart, but okay. it's... What's the question? So well, the E is 279. The, high school set, right. the number of girl slots at the high school divided up. Okay, you, you take this section of the high school, we're going to charge you this much for your usage of that part of the school. I mean, that's why you dump all the money in one bus. Same with buses. You've got more kids riding buses. They cost us more money to buy buses. I mean, it. That's why I don't understand why you, the way you guys think. I, I don't, I don't understand that. I don't, I don't, I don't understand how you're coming up with your numbers for work. Well, we're coming up on numbers based on that other funding formula. That's what we found out was the other funding formula. That's how we came up with them. So you want to do proportionate? How much? I haven't decided what I want to do it on. What we're just sitting here is having a conversation on. I, I, I want to keep the district together. And you are raising your voice. Broken apart. And if you could right. just speak in a civil way, I'd appreciate it. I don't like being accused of something that I'm not saying. I don't like it when comments are made that you're going to hold things close to your chest away from North Broward. But those were me. We've already said those. Okay, you want to repeat it again? You want to repeat your, 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 how you think of us? You've already torn us a new bump. Okay, once. If you want to do it again, all of you, go ahead and do it. I'll apologize That's not to the newspaper. All right, then. You chill I'd out, like too. To go full. <coughs> Thank you. Um, I, I want to try to make this clear. I think I understood that what Berwick thought or continues to think, and I'm not really sure, but we get, based on that formula, and I'll break these down into simple numbers, we get, say, $10 million. And Lebanon, based on their number of students, gets $8 million, and North Berwick, based on theirs, gets $6 million for a whole. It all, they, Berwick seems to think that the money that they're not getting enough because the state is awarding them more money because of those students. But I think what's not, is, is that correct? Uh, to make it really simple, this is the sheet that everybody has. You, you presented it last meeting and I talked to Steve about it when we met with him. It says here is uh, Education 279, at the very bottom of the page, and this is not the accurate number because there's more money in the budget that actually uh, wasn't accounted for. But it says state con contribution by a municipality. And it's a 9.5, 7.2, and 2.7. But in the category just before that, it talks about required contribution by a municipality. And it gives a number. The state gives a number of what the contribution should be by municipality. My question and our question has been, why is that not used? I, it's not, because it's just a question. Can I finish? Uh, and the reason that that isn't used is because we have the private and special law, which enabled all three towns to come together and work together. So when all that money comes in, it's kind of like a, we're a family, and we use all of the costs to, to make the family whole, which makes the school district whole. And I think something very important to think about is, you know, does Berwick have more expenses? Yes, a lot more expenses, especially special education expenses. Um, is Lebanon going to need some new schools? Yes, they are. 
And so, but we don't, if we don't, if we divide this all up, what happens is we're all out basically on our own and nobody is better off. We came to this agreement, and when I looked at the history of what's happened, we came to this agreement specifically because all of us together are stronger as a whole, and it winds up costing, however, we might be paying a little bit more because we have those more students, but if we divide up, if you look at the way that that works out, it winds up costing Lebanon and Berwick significantly more, and it probably will cost North Berwick more, but nowhere near as much. So it's, when you go back and you look at the original law that was written, to get us all together and to stay at the table, that funding agreement was made so that we, it was fair to each one, and it does, if we are all together, it winds up saving us all money and it allows us to have a better school district by working together. I, and I think Mr. Galermo, you know, couldn't have said it better. I think he did a really good job. And it does come down to our growth policies, like Mr. Plant said. And I think we really need to look at that because our costs are going to continue to go up if we keep, you know, putting in apartments and houses and things like that and they have two, three kids, that's, you know, a lot of money per child and the tax burden <coughs> that people pay never covers that. So there's a lot of things we need to all look at, and, but I, I do, I think it's prudent that we sit these tables together. And uh, I would like, Mr. Collins said he had some <coughs> information, um, and I don't have that information, and I, I think that we should have, on information sharing and we all have email addresses because I'd like to review the information that you have. Um, Representative Garish has quite a bit of information and if we can read it on our own time I think that we'll be better prepared for the next meeting and, or if, if there's going to be a next meeting and we'll be able to speak with each other individually if we have questions. Thank you. And this, this is more of a question to the school district, and uh, you know, it's been alluded to several times about the district being punished for following state regulations, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, something about you had said something about at our meeting about you know, you, you did something that the state said we needed to do, mm -hmm. and then we're being penalized. Could you explain yeah. a little bit more about that? Yeah, you know, uh, there's a there's an incentivized program for um, regionalization that's really you, you pick which disincentive you prefer. Um, if you follow, if you agree to participate in a, voluntarily agree to participate in a regional s service center, then your total system administration loss is around $43 a seat. It's something like it's a ballpark. And then if you decide not to participate in the regional service center, your loss will be 100, uh, 123, 132, I forget the specific number. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what a regional service center, what? So um, the state's original plan was to, uh, to take, a, to have nine to 12 regional uh, uh, let's see, they were school management and learning centers, SMLCs, and then they kind of morphed this into RFCs, these regional service centers. You can't have a, a list of, of alphabet letters for it, and it doesn't exist in education. Um, so these RFCs, people were allowed to talk with other districts to say, who would like to join into some service center to provide some kind of service. It could be that you're sharing uh, curriculum uh, materials or you're sharing professional development resources or that you're sharing um, the, anything that you can do. It could be about transportation. Um, what, what we have done is in RSU 21, which is Kenny Bunk, Kenny Bunk Port and Arun, I think it is. Mm -hmm. um, they have a, uh, they've been working on a collaborative for food service. 
And our food service director here, Tyler Goodwin, happens to be the executive director for that. And it serves 27 communities. So we get better buying power of that. Pretty easy. And then the other thing that um, we were looking into was purchasing um, custodial supplies through that same regional service center. So we, we decided in order to get this off the ground, not face the penalties that we were, uh, that we were potentially going to see, um, let's go for something that's, that's very low level, low, low fruit. We're already doing part of it. Let's add something else and let's see if we can't um, keep this in play until we see what happens with the legislation next year, if these things change or not. Uh, if, we, if we don't see a change in that, then we'll lose an additional $91 per seat, student seat next year. Um, it's, it's forced regionalization, which is, uh, in our, our district, for instance, these communities cover 135 square miles. We're doing 635,000 miles of buses. We've got kids who spend over just about an hour, a little bit more to, to come and go from school. So regionally, that's a pretty good size area. That's, that's not a small place um, for us, particularly in Southern Maine. So we also work with, uh, we've consolidated in the past, we've had a number of positions that we've consolidated and then have broken apart and put back together with other districts from food service to um, transportation, shop foreman, um, uh, let's see, to curriculum coordination, technology director, technology program management, hardware management to, I don't know, I think there's, there's three or four others I'm not thinking of, but we're constantly trying to consolidate our resources and figure out how to provide the same, the same programs for students, improve the, the quality of the services while streamlining the cost. So to be considered an RSU, a regional school unit, and have to join a regional service center so that we can regionalize is, is not something that I, I'm, follow, I'm having difficulty with the vocabulary on that. And to lose money as a, uh, picking your disincentive is not a great thing to be, be involved in either. And the biggest kick in the shin on that is when they first um, presented it to us is joining early, you know, getting in on it was going to be oh. an incentive. Right. It was, you would be, that's right. Yeah, you would be getting X. So they came to us going, join and we'll give you X dollars per kid. Don't join and you'll be seeing a penalty for two years. So we sat down and came up with a great idea with the food service and we decided to join up. Meanwhile, they decided to change it and realized so many people were joining in, there wasn't enough money to go around. So instead they did the pick your disincentive. You'll lose a smaller amount if you join or you're going to lose a lot if you don't. So we still join and we're going to be taking a hit. Very unfair, in my opinion, especially with uh, the timing of pulling the incentive away. Yeah, and then it was followed up. So we were already in application phase one, which was non-binding at the time. We just en entered application phase two, which is still non-binding. But uh, at the same time, I remember seeing legislation that was aimed at if any district decided not to participate in the RSCs, they wouldn't be penalized this year. So I in a second, we're going to join because we had no choice and we're following along as we're supposed to. And we have districts from here to Greeley that are working with us. And we're going to get a penalty because we did what we were asked to do. Meanwhile, the districts that said, no, we don't, we don't want a part of it, we're going to be held harmless. Where is that anyway? Has that been? I thought that was holding not not Please tell me that's a not not to. <coughs> Well, while they're looking up for the debt, it's just another example of the school budget difficulties of monies being stripped away and having to be found somewhere else. Yeah, we have Title II from the federal government, which is $100,000 that we we're not going to receive. And at this point, we've been told we will receive it, but now we've got another, there's another potential phase coming out that's going to pull that up. So it's very, it's very difficult to try to figure out where you actually stand or don't stand. These, 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 are, these are things that I think that having the three towns together working on this would be a good idea. Yeah. That no, I'm not saying that we should meet and just focus on the school funding portal. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that we should meet 
and discuss everything going on with the school district mm -hmm. and how we can all work towards that. So I, I would love to um, work with uh, town representatives to put together pieces to um, speak at hearings or to provide the letters that will go to the hearings to the uh, Education and Appropriations Committee because they do a good job listening to the information that comes in. They're appreciative of it. And uh, of course we have our own uh, connection with the school district. It can give me really good feedback and then we're in touch as well. So um, it, I think we have good representation, good voice. We have active people. Our school board has written a number of letters, presented as well in the Gus Red hearings, testified. We've had uh, a number of our school district personnel do as well. When they're talking about the proficiency-based education, the people that great schools partners, partnerships, contacts to say, we need your support on this. They contact all and say, you, you guys are leading the state in these kinds of initiatives. So we have good voices. What I love to be able to pull people's thoughts here and, and provide further information to the DOE and how it impacts, oh, excuse me, legislators and how it impacts the local. There goes to know what was said earlier about communication and lack of it. You know, and Berwick Selectman haven't heard anything about this until you came to our meeting and talked to us about it. You know, is you know that's the type of communication that you know the school board could be coming back to the towns to, to reinforcing that. So there's another you know, communication is a two way street they say. And <clears throat> these are things that we need to do moving forward from here. Is rather than rather than you know getting into our own little you know cycles, is we need to work together, all of us. And that's why I say is that is I think it would be a good idea for the three towns to get together, you know, with something. Yeah. Um, I and, and yeah, I I mean I think we should work on areas of common interest, undoubtedly. I mean, you know, there's, I, I think working together we could make an impact. But, you know, to kind of bring it back though, I mean, this was called because of the whole question of the funding formula. And, you know, when I asked, so, you know, wh why you think it should be changed, I guess I should state at least why I think it shouldn't be changed. You know, we know that. Well, I mean, <laughs> we know that. <laughs> what, why don't we ask another well, question? Come on, come on. Well, well right. but, 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 you know, the, the, the simple fact of the matter is that if we went to an all valuation formula, it would raise the per pupil cost so high for North Berwick, it would be cheaper for us to pull out of the district and then pay tuition back to the district because there's limits the state puts on what they can charge for tuition. It would be cheaper for us to do that, right? So I mean, and then the district would be caught short on money and it would have to raise that from your towns. So I mean, that, that's a reality, is that you go to all valuation, it doesn't make sense for us to do and anything Burl, but Burl, Burl has never said we want to go to all valuation we said repeatedly that well the 50 50 split your it, your bill to that you were trying to get present put into legislation would have would have repealed the special law that has it at 50 50 and put us into 28, which would have made it all valuation. We never went that far. We never tried to put it in legislation. We asked questions, but we never tried to put it in legislation. So that's <coughs> fake news. So going forward, is your intention not to do that? Our intention is to do more meetings like this. Okay? You come up with what's right and what's wrong with everything that's going on. You know, because no one at that table, including the school board, of any one of our towns had no problem in criticizing us and getting on their Facebook and writing all their baloney about us. Okay, well, before they even knew the facts. I right? personally didn't do that. I didn't say you did. I'm just saying that it came from different places. The school department we had one from, from the assistant superintendent, and then we had them from our own town. Okay, 
It was never our intention to break up this district at all. We're questioning how much, how, this was answered a lot of questions tonight in the 50-50 formula. We thought it was 100% valuation and, and then pupils. I never realized it was 50-50. I thought it was 100% valuation. So we learned something there tonight. If we had known that beforehand, maybe some of these questions put up. But we, we need our school board to bring us that stuff that they don't perform well. Well, I think I also would like to add that um, <laughs> Not, nothing. I think our, you know, our, our town manager would very happily have shared that information with you. Yes, tonight, yes. If, you know, if you had included him, and I agree, you know, it's wonderful you know, to have all three, you know, three towns together. We understand we made a mistake. Yeah. Okay, I just said that so much. We right. understand. What else would you like us to do? Right. You want to nail us to the front of the building? Yeah. Okay, but what? I, but, I, you know, I, I understand that. We made a mistake. <coughs> right. We yeah. all apologize for right. it. Okay. I don't know what else you want us to do. You want to move on from here, or are we going to sit and talk how bad we were? Well, I think you know. I think our question is, um, where do we go from here? Because we're I trying think to figure out how to get our politicians to get more money to this district, mm -hmm. and more people to go to Augusta and find out how we're going to get more district money to this district, and then we're going to figure out how to pay our teachers more money because they damn right deserve it. Uh, I didn't know they was killed in this goddamn district, fully, fully bringing my fully. kids to school. And she worked in this district, and when she had a master's degree, that I had over three hundred and fifty thousand dollars in, and she's making thirty grand a year with a master's degree. Is that right? No. I agree. Uh, superintendents are making that. I fully agree. I fully agree. So we need to improve things here. We need to improve them to, together. And that's not just about funding. It's about everything to do with this school district. Right. As a town and as a school board, it should be scrutinized. Mm -hmm. Okay. What happened to the million dollars that came into the budget after the budget was passed? Last year, where did that money million dollars go? That uh, came in from the was, state. Uh, it was seven hundred some odd thousand dollars. All right, dollars. so three quarters of a million. What and happened to it? And it was used to the, the uh, eleven and a half teaching and educational technician positions that were cut in the budget to get to the number that the state was requiring. Those positions were put back into the budget, and the voters at the uh, in the referendum right. had a question about. How would you like to handle that money that comes back from the state? Do you want to allow the board to use it to reinstate and so forth? So that's that's why that money was. It was either, it was either said that the school, where the towns like the school to reinvest the money in the school or give it back to the towns? Um, or how would you like us to spend it? Yep, let me just do a quick so I can <coughs> tell you that. You know, Uh, in the event that the district receives more state education subsidy than the amount included in its budget, shall the school board be authorized to use all or part of the additional state subsidy to increase expenditures, which is generally through positions, for school purposes in cost center categories approved by the board? So you got a, you got a blank check to do it. So you don't have to check with the towns, you don't have to check with the school board, I guess, or stubble up, do they rubber stamp it, or they ask questions? How does this, who, or does this just a district? Decide they're going to spend it. Well, you well, put, no. you so you put the question out <coughs> to, the, to the public, and the public decides: Do we want to have this brought back for discussion, or are you going to authorize the board to, uh, to act on, yeah, on the district's best, okay, best behalf, best interest? And where is the money going? The state's not sending us anywhere. Well, they're cutting us back like crazy. Yep. Where is it going, Beth? <laughs> 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 Last year we voted, we raised 163 million extra dollars for education. Mm -hmm. And there are multiple districts and that money is divided accordingly throughout the districts. And I work very closely with Mrs. Parker, Ms. Garish, and we do the best that we can to bring money back to this district. But we are also in competition between the three of us with another 148 legislators who are also fighting for their district and it's a fair process <coughs> of how the money is split up. Sounds like you really increased the money. If you take it away from us, it's, you make it more fair. And and Parker, I, to say, say something as well. I would love to be able to increase the money and unfortunately it doesn't grow on trees and we have other needs as well like funding the wait list for our disabled individuals. We have nursing homes closing down all over the states, crumbling roads and bridges. There's a lot of important things, and we have to prioritize our spending.
just like this school board and each of these boards of selectmen, we prioritize spending, goes to an appropriations table, and that's where the decisions are made. You're still not taking any less of money out of my paycheck every week. You're still taking the state taxes, and they're going up. I mean, come on, man. There's got to be some money out there somewhere. I, you know, we're not, either we're not meeting the right people or we're not hanging with the right people. Something's got to be done. Yeah. As I said, Mark, we do the best that we can. The three of us work together on this um, in a bipartisan fashion, and we do the best that we can. And there are plenty of other needs in the state. I understand that. Thank you. Um, you know, just to start off, I spoke to some senior legislators about what was happening in, our, in our town, and as a first term rep, trying to get an idea of how do I. How, how do I help or not help? And they said, stay as far away as possible. <laughs> However, I am a parent. I have four children currently in um, Marshwood school system. I would like just to say three things. Steve Connolly is constantly working to stretch dollars. He goes across districts. He works with Marshwood to share technology. <coughs> and a number of other things. I'm incredibly impressed by what Noble is doing as a parent. And also, um, Mr. Pendergrass, Mark, I was an ed tech in our school system for five years. It was required that I had a bachelor's degree to be able to do that. They paid me less than $15,000 a year. So I 100% <coughs> agree with you. We are not paying our teachers enough. There no. needs to be more money no. coming down from the state. The last thing that I'd like to say without getting too heavily involved is I think that it's very important when you're all talking about moving forward is that the amount of communication that I've received, not from selectmen, not from school boards, not from municipalities, is from your residents. I have had over 20 residents come to me specifically asking if their children are going to be going to Marshwood now or if they're going to be able to graduate with your, their class at Noble. I feel strongly that this, just as much as anything else tonight, needs to be spoken about and discussed how you're going to communicate what comes out of this meeting to the families and the students that are currently in your district <coughs> so that there can be a sense of assurance that I'm seeing good things here tonight to be honest, I sit on committee all week long, five days a week. Good things, believe it or not, are actually happening in this committee tonight, and I feel incredibly hopeful. What I would like to see is that there is a communication to your families and to your students to say, we've got this, and we're, we are moving forward. And Because I think there's a lot that can break down when families are feeling unsafe about the education of their children. So that's, that's what I would like to add. As far as working with the state, the last thing, when we're up there fighting for extra dollars, the thing that you have to remember is we are in the second wealthiest county in the state. So when I am up there arguing for extra dollars, I don't have a lot of people eager to listen to me when they're representing Jackman. We, we are there fighting. We have different ideologies, different ways that we believe the money should be spent. But I also want to share, Representative Garish came to me across the aisle very upset and saying, will you work with me on this? And I said, absolutely, whatever we need to do. So just to let you all know, we may be different parties, but we're speaking and we're recognizing that ultimately it's our children, our greatest resource in this district that we need to protect. And so however we can be of service, Steve, um, I go back and forth with you when I have questions about <coughs> budget issues um, and votes that should be taken. We're available. We're not going to be able to fix this issue for you. This has to be done at municipal level. I don't think we're asking you. And help us, help us get I'm just trying money. to be honest and transparent. Yeah, and you, can, you can get some more money, but there's nothing you can do to solve. You know, I don't think there's a problem here. So, um, Representative Garrison wanted to speak as well. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, I just wanted to address some of the state things that were said um, throughout the meeting so far. We talk about more money, and there was some untruths said earlier in the meeting with regard to the LePage administration. In the four years that I have been there, 
my first budget in 2014, there was an increase of approximately $80 million for education funding. And as Beth already said, last summer's budget, I think it was 162 or 163 million. To that point, it would make us wonder, well, where's the money going then, right? I am by no means an education um, school funding formula expert. <laughs> In fact, I asked not to be on the education committee. <laughs> so um, I feel when I hear from the experts that are on the committee is that the state's formula really needs to be looked at. Even when we voted that money out last summer, which was a lot of money, what I understood is the low receivers are still low receivers. The high receivers, the Thalmas, the Cape Elizabeths, were still going to be taken care of. So until the legislature, yes, that's us, looks at that um, and really goes, goes through it with a fine tooth comb, mm -hmm. I, I, we can throw all we want at education every single budget. But until we look at how it's divvied out, um, and like Jen mentioned, you know, Jackman and, and Penobscot and Arusta counties, it's, it's much different, and people are leaving there in droves to teach down here because why teach up there when you're making so much less money? The other thing that I wanted to address, Stan, you brought up the, I believe you brought up the CTE funds, mm -hmm. is that the 216,000? Just to address that, I have worked um, the past couple of weeks with Superintendent Connolly on that issue, and I'm meeting Wednesday with Suzanne at the Department of Education because I feel strongly that the answer that we got was unacceptable and we need to get to the meat of it as to why Noble isn't receiving that funding. That's right. um, the only other thing I wanted to say is that I talked to Steve a lot, particularly on bills. Um, in fact, beginning a session and as session goes, he gets a copy of every single piece of legislation that's going through the Education Committee. Sometimes I'm texting him on the House floor. This is a mandate. It sounds really good. It's going to look bad if I don't vote for this. But we have to realize that if the legislature and government in general keeps mandating and putting these mandates on what I feel should be a local control district, um, I'm, I'm all about local control, that those are huge cost drivers. The more mandates that we see coming down, um, the higher cost to education. Mm -hmm. Sir, can I just address very quickly? I, I know we're to the point of talking too much when I leave my phone on the kitchen table and I'm in another room and I hear it ring and I said, can you, can you get that for me? She said, it's Karen. <laughs> she's looking at it and says, it's Karen. She doesn't even call you Karen Garrett. She says, it's Karen. <laughs> and she's never met you. It's too much. Uh, I guess, you know, the, I, yeah, I think these are all wonderful points, and I really appreciate, you know, your, your input and, and your efforts um, on our behalf. I certainly very much appreciate it. Um, I think, it, you know, the bottom line is what's next. Um, and I think for us as a board, we don't feel that the formula is unfair. So for us to basically go back into it and make a change to it doesn't make a lot of sense for us because when we look at what was implemented you know years ago and the process involved with that the three communities were pretty clear that they supported that formula and i think the danger of sort of opening up the can of worms again is that it could lead to consequences that we may all regret and I certainly understand your motivation in doing so I wish it had been um, I guess a more a, you know a clearer and more fair process that you could utilize to do it but I certainly understand that you had questions that you wanted answered but I guess my point here is that for the town of North Berwick you know in all the information that we've been provided there is not an unfairness in this formula so for us to look at having to proceed with dismantling that or adjusting it would not be something that we probably would be supporting at this point in time. And I certainly, like I said, I do understand you know, why you would want to do that, but 
that's sort of our premise at this point. I think it is important for you to understand that, that we do not feel that this is an unfair formula for the three communities. Um, I, would, I would agree. I think Lebanon feels the same way. Um, we have never said it's fair or unfair, so it would be, you know, and, and, uh, I guess I would ask, we can take a positive action out of this meeting is, is uh, we've heard, everybody's heard communications. Um, I would be, I think this whole board would be very willing to have quarterly meetings with the superintendent, whether it be here or at another location. It doesn't need to be the school board. And not that I don't want the school board, but they have enough on their plate, I think. So it's just, and because the school board has different, they're a different function. And they should be thinking about the students. And they should be here regardless of the town. They should, town shouldn't matter. But the select boards do have a different purpose. We are about our towns. And so if we have quarterly meetings, again, maybe that's the process. Because then this could have been brought up in that multi-town quarterly meeting. Hey, you have a question. How is this computer? <coughs> and then that would have just, again, voided any of this <coughs> going from now. So I would like to make a recommendation that we try to set up quarterly meetings and see if the other boards and town managers should come as well because they are, we don't have them. We're, we're the smallest group. But um, I'd like to ask to see if the other boards would be willing to, to sign on to that, and I'm sure the superintendent could figure out a time that works for everybody. Maybe it's not quite quarterly because the budget season is probably a big, there's too much going on during a period of time, but um, I think that makes a ton of sense. To me. Yes, uh, just that the last time we did this cost sharing formula, the one thing that actually came out that was positive was we actually started, we were doing, we started with quarterly meetings and we went to buy in meetings twice a year, the three towns we were together. Unfortunately, it fell apart all of a sudden. I can tell you, we were inviting, we, we did it three times. It was a kind of revolved around. And we did it for about 10 years, 12 years. And then we had the last time, actually, North Brook invited Lebanon and Broick, and unfortunately, nobody came. So they kind of stopped. But it's true, it's not only just when we talk about cost sharing formula, but as towns we share common interests and we share common problems. And being able to talk about those things was always a benefit. We usually just sat around and kind of looked, went around the table and talked about things of mutual interest. And it was a very positive outcome. Certainly having that again would be a positive. And just a reminder, I mean, our workshops, our meetings are public. I, I think the board would welcome selectmen attending whenever you can. I was just whispering over to Steve saying, it's a good idea. Yeah. And there's no reason why the school board can't absorb a quarterly meeting. Yep. You know, bringing in all three towns, we can, I think it's a, nothing bad has ever come to bed more than the This is a real critical time of public education nationwide. There are things happening at the federal level we haven't even touched on tonight. And um, I think that the more communication there is, the more we work together, the more everybody understands the, the challenges we face, um, the better off we'll all be. I mean, I'm really anxious to open up communication prior to the meetings that we have, you know, the annual town meeting, um, because I think people in communities need to be well aware of you know, some of the problems that we're facing right now. So, they're probably already facing it. Yeah. So how do we get back to the, the why, do, why are we required to fund mandates that come from either federal or state level that aren't funded? There are certain things we gotta do anyway for children. Yeah. There are other things that probably are fund that mandated that we don't, we really probably don't need to do. How do you, how do, where do you start this, you know, does this, this, this some district have to start this thing in, in the state and say, look, this isn't right. If you're going to fund this, then we're going to stand up. It, it's like with sheep going to sheep every year. You can't, you can't even finish the town budget line because we don't have the school budget. Oh, that's right. It, it just, we don't get information from the state no, to get our budget done. It's ridiculous. Well, so why not make a stand? We've got to do something to make a stand. 
And that depends on you folks. Something's going to happen to change it. They can't yes, keep doing it. It does. And when you look, I know that I've served on health and human services as well as energy, um, utilities, and technology. And often there would be mandates that would come down, and, and you need to elect people that do not vote for those unfunded mandates. And, or, and a lot of times these laws get passed because it's the representation. People vote for unfunded mandates knowing it's passing a burden onto a small community. And I mean, there's, we need to think about those things and understand exactly what we're voting on. So when you guys know that there's legislation, I think Steve knows, he follows it often. Um, Steve um, Eldridge contacts me about legislation that may be good or may be bad. But communication is key. Dustin has, has contacted me before. But if we know. But I know, no, I don't want to vote for an hour time to If it's not a time to it's not going to get my vote. And I think we need, need to look at that and understand, understand that. that. So moving forward to the next part of the meeting, uh, I've already kind of heard from the president that um, you know, changing the funding formula is kind of a no-go right now, and I'd like to have some quarterly, if not by annual meetings. Um, I think the North Road um, would love to do something like that, but we haven't heard yet from the firm. I said from the beginning that I think that we should have meetings together. And I don't think I don't think it's necessary for all, all the school board and all the selectmen to be all of us. That's why I said that a smaller group, you know, would probably be able to do it if we have representing representation from each town from both boards they can report back to the respective boards and be much more efficient and i for one would not be voluntary to be on that board because i have enough meetings already and um, <clears throat> but i know there are people on our board that would attend those and, uh, and whether they're quarterly or biannual i, th I think the more often the better you know, is I think that this is things that these are things that we need to move forward. Is I just like to touch on the state funding. Is <clears throat> there is a state mandate for the state to fund education at 55 percent? I don't believe that's ever been there. <laughs> you know, when I was a representative. Josh was a representative. Them being representative is we've never been able to meet that. Is it was a people's referendum to put money into the education system that passed overwhelmingly by the people. The legislature has failed to enact that. And that's another issue that we need to look at. Is the you know, referendums come through and the people vote for them, but for some reason they get cut off at the state level. So as I said, is I think that we need to meet need to talk more about this but I don't think this is the right size of the group to do it and the subcommittee would be better and you know I know you guys the school board in their budget goes for six months and we go four months with our budget is <clears throat> meeting every other week every week sometimes is you know fitting another meeting into a schedule is difficult so and and as far as the school funding is, as we said, and we have never talked about positively changing it. We've just been asking questions about what would happen if we changed it. And, you know, we've had a lot of information come forward, and it's going to take a while to go through it all, as I have some other, you know, feelers out there to get other information. So and when I get that, I'm glad to share it with all of you. But, is like I said, is I think that um, continuing meetings is the best thing to do in this situation. Are you talking about continuing meetings to talk about the school funding formula or continuing meetings to talk about improving communication? Both. Whether it, whether it's not funding not necessarily funding at this level, but funding at the state and federal level, what we can do to push that forward. And, you know, and as far as communication, and we've heard it again and again that you know, we need to keep talking. Well, I'm going to 
make a personal statement myself. Uh, my family's been in North Borough since the 1760s. Uh, my mother graduated in 1969, was the first graduating class uh, when this was a district. I graduated in 1998, played on a state championship football team. I came back to teach in this community because this community gave me so much. But I cannot, in good conscience, as a selectman elected by the town of North Berwick, not go to them if the intention is not to drop the funding formula issue and discuss other options. And we are going to have those discussions tomorrow night at our selectman meeting. Um, and if you guys want to meet and to talk about issues and state issues and federal issues and education, I'm all for it. But if you intend to continue to dig into how are we going to take it from one town to another town, we're going to have to take steps. And we need an insurance from Berwick that that's not going to happen, that it's not going to be a fight on how we're going to divide up the money between our three towns. Instead, it should be a fight to make the state spend the 55% that they have. No, that's what I just said. I said, it's, I said whether it's... It's good. What he wants to hear is, we will allow, we will use, we will allow to continue the process of going to the legislature to get the funding for the change. That's what you want to hear. That's what I'm That's what you want to hear. Yeah. So basically, we've said that we're out of our way. You heard it now. That's what we're going to do. I think you just had to come state because I didn't interpret it that way. And I'm on the Burke board, and I don't support you the um, funding formula. After the presentation we had tonight, last week, um, I know exactly what Steve was talking. I understand the questions you had. Uh, I see all sides, but I think at this point, we need to move forward, and I think, as Mark said, we will not be pursuing. Uh, I would like to pick up where you left off in your last comment mm -hmm. about other ways we can do to get more money for this district. I agree 100%. Yeah. I think we'd, we would Maybe. like this to be a collaborative process, yeah. and I think, you know, you know, certainly, you know, everybody's input on this uh, only benefits, you know, all of us and ultimately the kids, and that's always the bottom line. Real, real quick. Yeah. How does mid June to late June work for everybody? Oh, so I just wrote down into June. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get the kids to get the kids to get the the kids to get the kids to get the the kids to get the kids to get the the kids to the kids to get the kids to get the kids to the we have been in the late 20s. Um, um, and and you know, that are like three months from now. Call us. We know we have a yeah, I got some now, I get it. <laughs> 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 so the, the meeting in June will be all of us again together? Well, I think the first, I think we should have a positive meeting with all of us together. Yes, together. Yeah, without this funding for me, the issue, the issue, the issue, the issue, the background. And then, and then, not going to lock it up. Thank you. Hopefully, we'll have a district through budget, and I can talk about one of the things that we see coming up on the horizon that we're going to need people to say we need some change in these things. And there might even be counts, non education things like revenue sharing. If, you know, if do, we, a lot. Do, do you have a date for the, the school budget vote? Uh, thank you. Um, nice segue. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I have good eyes. <laughs> the camera behind you. Yeah. Um, Blair, I know it's not this camera. Okay. Don't, don't even start with it. All right, so uh, 
what what we want to do is we're going to we're going to shift our vote to uh, the municipal vote to enable the communities to work a little closer together on that and work with the schools. And so that's what June 12th, June 12th. And then so and then I noticed in, I was backing up uh, looking at some emails about stuff and I noticed one from Laura a while ago that talked about the absentee ballot in three weeks time is a pretty good range to try to make sure we get those back. So we're picking um, May 21st as the um, town meeting here in the auditorium. Uh, that's a Monday, but it's the only night that, that week that the auditorium is open because of uh, concerts. Yes. May 21st. Mm -hmm. 630. 630, 630, 630, May 21st. Are you still going to do the mailer that goes to everybody? Yeah, okay. Uh, this is last, this is yeah. this year's, but uh, just out of curiosity, for Berwick I have on the front cover, I was thinking that one of these times wasn't correct uh, for, for this year's thing. Berwick Town Hall, um, be able to uh, vote in the designated locations 8 to 8, 8, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., is that, are those the hours of town hall? Right. Yeah. Okay, and Lebanon, I have 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. for voting. Yeah. Yeah. No? Okay, in North Berwick, I have 8 a.m. Oh, so those are good. Great. Thank you. Thank you guys very much for coming. We appreciate everything. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.